This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. I'm gonna go out and look at uh, the trees after we got three inches of rain yesterday, finally. Five weeks of drought. This is the worst drought I've ever seen in the summer. It was kind of scary. It was really making me nervous. Um, we're a biodynamic certified rare tropical fruit farm, but everything we grow is biodynamic. And, um, we make our own compost to grow our houseplants in. I grow these houseplants to plant out into the orchard floor, these philodendrons, and anthuriums, monsteras, amidrium. I got this amidrium medium silver tissue culture that had some bungle issues when I got it. Tiny little leaves that rotted off, but it sent, I moved it to the sun, it sent out this leaf, now it sent out this. So it's finally snapped out of its bunk. Uh, we grow them in biodynamic compost that we make here on the farm. It's basically pine shavings, um, straw, hay, hay rather from grass hay, and uh, cow manure and pea. Whatever else they do there, spit. And then we age it. I had biodynamic preps and some bokashi uh, fruit from our farm and wait several months. When we get a lot of rain, it, it makes it very quick. When we don't, it doesn't, but it's very easy. And I love it. And growing in Florida is just so incredible that it's so easy and people don't know it. I think they have to water and they have to fertilize and they have this whole system that was developed by man on how to grow their plants, whether it's chopper drop or pot, wood, wood chips or MPK or uh, rock dust. When then actually, what I've discovered is we kind of don't have to do anything here in Florida. It's, I mean, it's called Florida for a reason, not by the growers that, that have developed modern citrus here, but um, by the conquerors who colonized this area when it was just Indians. They knew how to grow naturally. For some reason we've forgotten all this and I mean look at this five weeks of drought and it's like it looks very happy no water my little uh, Anona Salzmania that survived the drought got bit by a rabbit <laughs> Hey, it was big enough, hopefully it'll come back. Oh, you have to deal with stuff like that when you have all this space for nature to live. So we don't, we don't like go into the system. We stay off our soil. We don't like walk through this and like disturb it. If the palm fronds look a little funky, I'll get a long thing and cut them, but I just drop them where they're at. So these red things, I, I don't know the name of them. They're not edible. They're just ornamental, but they're, you know, they're very easy. They look like the leaves were all dried up. Hanging on the sticks during the drought that just ended yesterday. Um, but look at them now. Not hardly any leaf drop. That's what you would see if the tree was going to die. The leaves would drop off. Look at all those birds. Those birds want to come here. I can't see them. They already left. They're way out of there. They'll probably come back. All the animals that come here, the birds. <laughs> They help clean up the fruit that I don't pick <clears throat> and the fruit I want to pick. But 
there's so much of it that it's, I get more than enough. So it's, this is the Kwaimuk tree. I wanted to check this tree to see if it dropped fruit, because that's what it does when it's first starting to fruit. It will drop fruit, set fruit and drop fruit, set fruit and drop, drop fruit. And water, there's a fruit right there. So it didn't drop the fruit. I see a few, couple of fruit, a few fruit. Oh, thank God. Um, this has never been watered in two years. I connected it for about a year and a half to water, but the, the, the pipe was broken. There's a rabbit had chewed through the black plastic pipe. So it wasn't really getting any water. So it's, uh, so I knew it could survive without water, but it's been two years since, uh, we've had it connected to water. Uh, artesian drip that didn't really help the the trees the water i planted them without watering them and then connected the bigger grafted trees this is a grafted koi muck i see quite a bit of fruit on here and it's getting kind of big i know some's going to be ready soon it's amazing it did not drop the fruit during the see that big fruit right there i'm gonna eat you baby Did not drop fruit during the drought. A couple of my jackfruit didn't survive the drought. They cracked, but the fruit, but there's one on there. It's a grafted tree. Every year this property gets more and more fertile. So all that uh, dead carbon now that we're getting rain is just gonna turn into, it's like I put a fertilizer on the, on the whole property, covering the whole all everything. That sepadilla got frozen from the 31 degrees we had. Freeze two days in a row. Um, coldest I've ever seen it. Here's a, a egg fruit that half of it froze, but it survived the drought. The, a raw sepote. Here's another raw sepote. People think that these plants compete with the the, the plant for water and nutrients, but that actually the plant keeps an even amount of water via its roots in the soil around that plant. Because if it has the root in the ground, that's eight times its weight in, in water in the soil. So by removing that, you are removing all the water and your chance of harvesting water from air with the help of the plants. The sepadia did not freeze. But it doesn't have any fruit on it, which is fine. I thought it did. I think it all fell off. That's what happened. It's okay. It needs to grow. Um, this is jackfruit. It's got the fruit on it still. Looks much happier. That big ice cream bean. And the katuk that looked like it was dead is like fluffy and green. There's the pond. That's how dry it's been. A pond should be uh, like six feet deep right now. But it was like... I'm pretty sure it was mostly dried up. But I saw that water had trickled into it about three inches. I could see it last night, so. The mangoes have never been watered. I started talking about never having to water mangoes because none of our mangoes have ever been watered and uh, they were never connected to any water. Uh, sure, some trees are near them, but there's really no trees near here. This Kwai Muk got watered, but that broke. And that jackfruit got watered for two years. The sapodillas got watered for two years, but the, none of the mangoes did. But we haven't watered anything in our grove in two years. 
This white sapote looks fine. It never really seemed to mind the drought. This jackfruit looked horrible, uh, but now it looks perfectly good. So I mean, Florida's, you can't do this in California. It's just, this, it wouldn't be green. People would laugh if you said there was a drought and it was this green. Uh, Thai sweet tamarind. covered in flowers. It's going to have a lot of fruit. This always produced, been producing fruit for a few years. It's a grafted tree from Excalibur. It doesn't get very big. I don't know what it's grafted to. It's a nice little sweet tamarind. Very sweet fruit. And the lychees look good. There was some um, burn damage on it, some over here. I mean, it was a horrible dry drought. Our pastures were like completely um, no grass. So, but it's, see the leaves, it's the lower leaves. The lower leaves die, they drop off, and now they'll grow, now that we're getting water. We're supposed to have some hurricanes move through, so. Um, the trees are looking good. All this stuff that people hate is what provides the, keeps the water in the soil. It doesn't compete with your trees. It's crazy. Crazy that they convinced people that that's what was going on. So this dry spot patch here, our well is right there. Not there, that's a, that's a well, but we don't use that one, but that's a well. So all that, dry patch is from it's a shallow well um, from the from the water going out of that area has to be I, know, I just like looking at all this stuff it's Florida fascinates me that you can just grow all this stuff without ever doing anything <laughs> people think it's a lot of work but it's not this system you don't have to worry about drought in the winter. You don't have to worry about drought in the summer. It just keeps pumping out food and getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That's a torch ginger right there, a big red one. Next to this heliconia. So we have all this, these plants and stuff that we could sell, but I'm not into that. I'm just not into being a nursery and I'm not into uh, being a fruit farm. Just, I, I've been kind of honest about that. I do like to build this, a garden. I did like to, I do like building this garden. So, um, but thankfully I, we don't need the money. So, um, this Heliconia rostrata. So, um, those heliconia, I think that's Pedro, San Pedro? I think it's Pedro, what is something like that? Pedro Red, or that's a giant one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, egg fruit looks like it's starting to flower again. So that fruit in the cha churro, I need to cut this passion vine off of it now while it's uh, doing good. The uh, calatheas seem to be able to take the drought. Calatheas, Diffenbachias. This one died back, but it's coming back now. Gingers. So this uh, is uh, one of our rarest uh, star apple. I don't know, I'm just amazed that you can grow this super rare, expensive tropical fruit and um, kind of don't have to do anything. You will get more fruit 
if you apply input like manure like we do this is like our compost pile so this is a zebu turd that's a zebu turd those are zebu turds and these are pine shavings and grass hay that were peed on it's from our cow barn i apply it every day i clean the cow barn and i apply it every day year round small amount that's all i do 50 pounds 50 pounds a day that's i had two horses before and it was 50 pounds then <clears throat> but now i have four mini moos and two donkeys I think it's about the right amount. I mean, our bowl is 32 inches tall, so it's it's not like he's some huge giant bowl that's seven feet or six feet. So they're, they're little micro cows. I think he weighs probably 200 pounds, probably 190 pounds or so. He's like the size of a big sheep without the wool. <clears throat> Super sweet. I love him. So four tiny little cows and two little donkeys. That's it, on 10 acres. And then I redistribute the manures. And I stay off this system. I don't walk on any of this. I think that's really a, a crucial um, part of successful growing in Florida. So I was walking by here, because there's all kinds of stuff in here. There's a little citrus. This one never seemed to mind the freeze. A cha-cha, uh, citrus. There's some other stuff in here, but I can't find it. Oh, I was looking and I saw a, I'm pretty sure it's Garcinia macrophylla. Um, I have a path here. I can only see it because the grass didn't grow this summer. And when it rained, it beat it down. So the dead stuff. So all that dead stuff was the dead grass. That's why people act like we have to, you know, do you do chop and drop? Nature does it by, nature will do it for you if you leave the plants alone in Florida. You don't remove everything. Don't weed everything. Don't mulch everything out. But people are repulsed by this for some reason. They're okay if you say it's a, it's a state park. But if it's in your yard, they're repulsed by it. But it works. It's the centerpiece of our fertility. Um, that's how we're able to get through drought and grow these little tiny trees, seed grown. This is one of our uh, fruits from our uh, Ross Sapote. The uh, grasshoppers were uh, attacking the tree when it was under drought stress but it's gonna survive the creatures will get stuff don't get me wrong the rabbits will will eat your favorite uh, fruit tree but it's a chimpa jack this is all dry farmed uh, this is a you know three star fruit I'm not a big star fruit fan and I had it after I ate some monstera fruit and it was like I couldn't get it out of my mouth it's like I had to scrub my mouth out fast enough you know I couldn't get it out of my mouth fast enough so I showed you this pomelo on previous videos I think the last one probably the one before I know one of them at least and it showed the, the leaves all like laid down on the, on the tree. So it looked like they were like, the tree was like dying. But look at this tree now. I said, you'll see, I'll show you. I'll show you what it does. It looked like that for weeks on end. In fact, they wouldn't even open after it Usually they will close during the day during drought and open at night, but it was not even opening at night. It was like that stressed out, but it didn't lose any. I'm certain that, well, I think this is kind of proof that uh, you don't have to water anything in Florida. If you focus on soil health, 
any of the fruit trees. They all grow the same way. I don't grow Japatacabas though, so I have trouble with Japatacabas that are fed water-soluble organic fertilizers. Those don't do well here. The reason why people got to watering is because they were using the uh, water-soluble fertilizers, so they had to add water in order for them to work. Otherwise, the plants will burn. That's why. Just completely ignore the soil. Okay, so this is that uh, other star fruit, the Jocko Beach one I showed you that looked, I mean, it looked like it was dead, didn't it? Look at it. Yeah, it's got some leaf damage and it's lost a few leaves, but not very many. It's gonna come back stronger than ever. It's when you water the plants that they become dependent on water and then when they don't have water, they die. That's how that works here in Florida. He couldn't do this in a mowed lawn if you're weeding all the grass from around your tree. You couldn't dry farm for sure. Impossible. And you probably couldn't do it if you had just wood chips. In fact, I'm positive you couldn't. <laughs> got to have the carbon in the ground because the carbon has the water in it not on top of the ground they just got growing all wrong I mean it's kind of proof look at this little uh, this is one of those you know seedless cutie citrus the mandarins the seedless mandarins Look at how little that thing is, but it was only, it was seed grown and it was this, you know, that big. I planted it last winter. No water. It's the Ingus spectabilis. They like water too. That's a big Inga tree up there. This is like the worst spot in the entire yard because it's right in front of the house and all they had here was lawn. They didn't, this was all pure lawn right up against the trees and I'm sure they glyphosated around the trees to get the weeds away and chain link fence. But that's Florida, you have to kind of pay attention to that if you're looking to buy. Uh, just kind of expect that they've polluted it with fire ant killer and uh, herbicides and probably other insect killing chemicals. This is another uh, star fruit that looks totally fine. These are all seed grown though. It's a black sapote, it's got fruit on it, it's fine. I just feel there's such a need for this to be shown to people and that's kind of why I do this. But my partner might be getting transferred to San Diego promotion. Even at 65, he's still in demand. And um, I like San Diego. I miss the grocery stores out there. For some reason, everyone thinks that, I don't know, I'm not gonna start talking about it, but it's really challenging to get um, organic. <clears throat> Even the farmer's market, they say they're organic, but they're not certified. So you know what's going on. It's allowed for some reason. It's really, it's aggravating to me being an organic certified farm. That's why I'm not gonna continue my organic certification. But we're biodynamic certified, and I'm gonna stay that way. We're organic certified, I think, until December 1st. Um, I think that's the date. It 
So these little uh, aeroids that I uh, grow in the sun room. Let me go look at that kumquat. Yeah, so he might get transferred. So, all that talk about selling this place. This is that Patricia, that not Patricia, but Charonier, that just didn't do well with the drought. And um, it looks still green, so hopefully it'll snap out of it, but it didn't like it. I noticed the philodendrons that I started in the winter are fine. But the ones, winter is drought time here. But the ones I started in the summer didn't, couldn't survive the summer drought or didn't do well. So I got all these Garcinia trees with fruit all over them still. Um, oops, I see a bunch of fruit I can collect for seeds. Still a lot of fruit left on this tree. Look at that. These are good. God, there's a lot of fruit still on here. The other one has a lot of fruit too. Um, highly medicinal uh, qualities. This is uh, our fruiting uh, cacao, seed grown fruiting cacao. Uh, seems totally fine. It had flowers on it. So I imagine it's gonna start setting fruit now that we're getting some rain. Never seemed to mind the drought. It just wasn't setting a lot of flowers. But it will now. This is its child from this past winter, from the fruit of that tree right next to this Talisia floresii that I didn't realize was here. Oh, this Philodendron Maximus looks good. Has a new growth point on it. Um, I gotta find the one that has the berries. Uh, there's that Achacha tree, seed grown. They all look good, everything looks fine. Fine. What I see is going to be one of my favorite fruits is the Nakli latifolia, the African peach, and it is fine. Um, that leggy down here because of the because of the shade. The one in full sun is not that leggy. So here's that kumquat tree that looked. I mean, it looked like it was like a fraction of that size. It was like all the leaves were all the way up against its main stem. And it just looked like it was dead or, you know, soon to be dead. Most people would have written it off. My partner freaks out and I have to tell him to calm down because well, we walk the dogs on this. He loves it. He loves walking through here. You know, who wouldn't? It's gorgeous. It smells really good today too, by the way. Um, But he freaks out, but I have to like calm him down. Calm down. It doesn't freak out too bad because uh, we take our ashwagandha powder, root powder, and he stays pretty calm on that. So, uh, but it's, it kind of tries to rub off on me. Like, should I be worrying about this? Is that gonna survive? Will they fruit? Will they hold fruit? Yeah. They'll survive and they'll fruit more and they'll hold more fruit if you give them some manure. Not very much. Our manure input only works out to 26 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year from our four cows and our two uh, miniature donkeys. Citrus. There's a citrus there. Our citrus doesn't have greening, by the way. These are seed grown from organic sources. So this is a gym that looked worse than the other one, but it looks just as good, if not better, and never dropped any leaves. 
But it really is about the soil and staying off of it and having plants, plant material in the ground. Plant is your be a plant is the best input you could purchase. For some reason, they remove all the plants. So they re would remove this and they would remove this. And then they do a bunch of chop and drop around this banana and repeat. But in the sand, you have to have the, the carbon, uh, which is the water in the soil, not on top of it. These cacao look amazing. I'm really, I'm, I'm just shocked that nobody's reached out to me to grow cacao commercially here in Florida. Um, I just find that kind of bizarre. Maybe they get enough from my videos, but people still don't understand that I don't water. I mean, do you water that? No, that's never been watered. Somebody asked if we ever, how often I water this philodendron or this Monstera deliciosa that has fruit all over it. But I've never watered it. This one cacao was getting some drought stress, but just on the tips of it, it's lower leaves. Chachas look good. There's some big chachas in here. They look good. Everything looks good. We survived the drought, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. Cacao. These are a year old uh, seed grown. All these little trees are all seed grown. Took me a while to get the fertility right on this place. This was not an easy task. But I know you, anybody could do it with just a little zebu manure and donkey manure for sure, mixed together. We still have sugar apples. Thankfully, the creatures have been getting them and dragging them to the road. Uh, this guava looked horrible. I should go look at that guava since I'm looking at trees and I showed that before because um, the big guava looked horrible. Nobody wanted to buy any guava fruit. And nobody wants any monstera fruit. That's kind of odd. <clears throat> I could certify it organic, but I haven't. All I have to do is call them since I'm not selling any. Um... Or to send them an email, please add Monstera Deliciosa to our organic certified crops. And if you listen to this, please do it. So I know you do, some of you. <clears throat> All these Garcinias look great. I believe this is Dulcis. It's Madruno. Macrophylla. This is a red flowered Garcinia of, I'm not sure what it is. It could be a male Hombroniana. Oh, I got these Brasiliensis also. Yeah, I'm, and if, I'm planting the Garcinia seeds. Um, <coughs> soon. I don't hold seeds. These are good. It's good if you have a lot of these to eat. Makes them better. They have an excellent flavor. Sweet, and you could tell that there's, well, there are known health benefits. It's the Brasiliensis. I did a video about it not too long ago got the organic compounds in it. I make leaf teas from all the trees, leaves, and drink them. Got more crop coming on that. Mm -hmm. 
It's had some fruit on it, and I think I missed it. Yep. This is the first year this fruited. <sighs> this is the Garden Ariana. It's a tiny little fruit. Oh, it still has some fruit on it. It's been fruiting for a while. It's a female Garcinia Hombroniana. flowered for the first time this year. This black sapote lost a lot of leaves, but I really don't care. <clears throat> it seems fine. They seem to get stronger and stronger every day. They were, they, they were nursery trees. They were like the weakest link here without water. They looked horrible, but What is this? Is this some, my, uh, my Champa Jack? I think maybe it could be. Um, sure looks like it. It's something, something that fruits. It's amazing this stuff isn't growing everywhere right now because Normally it would have been to seed already, but it's only growing in this area right here. It's a mango that froze. We had about 30 mangoes that froze this year. This one just lost its top, probably during that rain that just happened. But it hung on to it all the way until now. So eight months and never got any beetles. It had fungi in it. In fact, there's some right there. I'm sure that that tree can, dead part of the tree can harvest water from the air when it's still attached to the living tree and put the water into the ground. There's another one that froze. It's still eight months later. That's, that shows you how it's been like desert here. Um, this one was fine, except for the bottom part froze right there and there, but those are still, that's from eight months, those leaves. They didn't get knocked off because that's covering it. That's not from the drought, that's from the freeze. <clears throat> this was from the drought. This was a nursery started tree that got hit hard by the freeze, but recovered, but is coming back very strong above its graft. It's a Hazia sapodilla. It's gonna be fine. This mango's fine. The black safotes. They'll be fine. I mean, it sure is green considering it was like, I haven't had to mow in five weeks, soon to be six. I'll probably have to mow though if it rains a few more times. The sugar cane looks totally good. Okay. So this guava tree does not look so good. This guava had so much fruit on it and I tried to sell it and nobody contacted me about it. I kind of like forced somebody oh, it's The ends of the branches are fine. It's just going to get really huge now is what I'm guessing. So it lost the lower leaves. Those are all the lower leaves, but the, the ends of them are fine. But now that we're getting all this rain, that's just going to send it into huge flower. Oh, it still has fruit on it. That's shocking. Had so much fruit on it, but I was eating it every day. Then it was just getting too hot out here. Um, doesn't look good, the fruit. I see some fruit on the ground. Yeah, this tree doesn't look the best. But it definitely didn't die anywhere. Um, and it's definitely going to come back twice as strong. So yeah, I can't imagine having to move to San Diego again. Um, and having to sell this place. Uh, 
probably more likely to be willing to look at this a chachiro uh, it's fine stuff's fine stuff survived i'm gonna go look at the sugar apples got quite a bit of bananas coming on finally we should there's like 200 bananas and i'm gonna divide some more off here That tree looks good. Oh yeah, there's some fruit on there that's fine. This tree never stops fruiting, um, this guava tree. And it's a wormless fruit <clears throat> that nobody wants. Here's another guava seed grown. I'm not really sure which one that is, but it looks okay. I'll know when it sets fruit. These bananas through here, it's like, they would have been huge by now if we had had rain, but we're getting rain now, so they'll be okay. And the pigeon pea that I threw through here is doing okay. Those were the frozen mangoes. Too much fruit. Ever, anybody have that problem? It's a full sun growing uh, uh, finger lime. You know, that's the citrus from Australia, the indigenous citrus from Australia that they make uh, vegan caviar out of. So look at this our seed grown citrus. So I planted these fruiting trees out here. I, you know, this is from fruit off of one of our trees from our beach house tree that I uh, that grows on a sand dune without water and produces tons of delicious lemons and these little pecks are from the birds attacking it I did video of it but trees very healthy I mean I don't know why people have so much issues with uh, citrus here in Florida. Look at this, all these citrus on this tree. These are more of our seed grown citrus. The amazing thing is, is all of them down here because of the weight. This, so those brown spots, that's from the birds on the fruit. Look at all that fruit. trees are, are loaded and this is a four-year-old tree from seed same with this one so in January about January this will be a, a five-year-old tree with nice clean fruit on it and healthy leaves Some mangoes over there. There's a big achacha tree right here. This one's gonna be fruiting fairly soon. So then there'll be two fruiting achacha trees here. So you don't have to water. You don't have to stress out over. And they produce. It's kind of amazing. That's why I had to like do these videos to show people Basically all this crap they've been telling you, how hard it is to grow here organically is like so effed up. This is a curry tree. Seed grown, it's doing fine. Oh, uh, here was a, I did all those cuttings of um, uh, mulberries in here and I don't see a lot but I planted lots of stuff in here so it wouldn't be the first time that stuff didn't grow in here because this was lawn and it was heavily compacted and it's just now getting right but I did one because I always talk about planting the stuff in the weeds the tree the seeds in the in the base of the plants 
So I planted this mulberry cutting right here. And it's the only one that seems to be thriving at the base of this shrubby weed that people remove. And you think that would have died from the drought if plants competed for moisture? It's not the plants competing so much, it's them out competing and smothering. That's where the, the damage happens. Okay, so I haven't been down here for a little while. These trees look totally fine and they have a, looks like a new crop set. I don't know when that happened, but I see little sugar apples on here. And I see big ones on here. And I know there'll be some more. Here's a Atamoya. Oh yeah, here's the sugar apples. Still quite a bit, there's some little ones. So uh, it's gonna be a long season. Um, but good fruit, they're really good. These are the chewy sugar apples. They're $10 a pound. Um, you gotta call and make an appointment or text me and make an appointment to pick them up. Is it Adamoyas? Oh, this one's split. That was probably from the dry weather. Adamoyas is one of my favorite fruits. Um, little tiny fruit, but it's kind of a small tree. Very healthy looking tree. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh yeah. So they're priestly atomoyas, they're delicious. Yeah, so if you know anybody looking for a fruit farm, this might be, I might be willing to negotiate um, in Vero Beach. You know, this is Vero Beach. It's an Atamoya, little Atamoya tree. It's the Elama tree. And they're in Diversifolia. so amazing that these things are never watered. The ginger suffered and you know people you know the organic certifiers would like me to harvest this ginger but this ginger water keeps these trees watered during times of stress so that they're able to produce fruit year round or not year round but in season. Our sugar apples at the beach fruit year round and are evergreen. But here they lose their leaves. This is a sugar apple, had ants in it. It's a custard apple, an ona reticulata, seed grown. Stuff's looking okay. We've got fruit. We don't have tons of sugar apple fruit, but I've been selling it all along here and there. So here's a our uh, Alama Genova Red, and that looks almost like it's set fruit. Um, big flower. That would be nice. I haven't tasted that Alama fruit yet. That's one fruit I haven't tasted. I would like to taste if I, before I move to San Diego. It's the Atamoya tree. I'm trying to get these seeds because I grow the Atamoya seeds out. I see big fruit over there. I should go get that. There's some good fruit over there. Look at that fruit.
with uh, Adam Oya. I think it's a Geffner. Leaves look a little different on the priest leaf than the Geffner, and the fruit definitely looks different. Yeah, see, I didn't come down here for a few days, and I missed fruit. I missed fruit option. Got a lot of these seeds already, so. Mm. Sedamoya is so good. This ginger got frozen. It was the only one out of all the gingers on the property that got froze. And it was coming back from the freeze. Oh, it's coming back. It's a little moisture. I see it right there. This is all one of the Gallengal lesser gin gingers. fruit. I guess there's quite a bit of fruit. No, I have, we have a lot of sugar apple trees. This is that chewy purple sugar apple, right? Yeah. This tree looks very healthy. The fruit was very good. I have a few seeds of that I'd part with, but I'm going to plant most of them because obviously a tree that you can just plant out here, then it starts fruiting without doing anything from seed is a fruit I like to grow. Like these sugar apples do. It's a sugar apple, it's supposed to be red, it's supposed to be red, just never thrived in that spot. The red sugar apples, the compound mob, are like not very good producers for me. Um, in two locations, they've been poor producers, so I don't know if that's the case in three locations, but. I'm just planting the chewy sugar apples. I got some Kampong mob seeds, but I didn't want to grow them. I, I like the chewy sugar apples better than the non-chewy. Yep, they look good. Everyone looks good. Longans are looking good. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Hope you have a beautiful day.